Zero Fossil Fuel. I uh, just wanted to give you folks a quick update. I've been experimenting with a, uh, a solution in the test cell of approximately 30% white vinegar, 70% um, distilled water, which I've been collecting massive amounts of from my window box air conditioner drippings and just a tiny bit of dishwashing detergent. So uh, I forget which uh, person recommended I give this solution a try. It is uh, similar to what is being used with the Joe cell. And um, I have to admit, I am reasonably impressed with what it does. Now, being such a strong vinegar solution, I've actually for a while took the voltage and reverse uh, reversed the polarity on the plates for a while and then ran it, brought the temperature up, shut it down, took the plates out of the uh, electrolyzer plate cavity and uh, just wiped them down and they came very very clean. I was I was pleasantly surprised but in terms of the the gas generation capability uh, I was also pleasantly surprised. Now I'm gonna say at this point that no know, knowing that we have a one quarter inch spacing between these plates uh, it is readily apparent that it, that is not going to be close enough for a 12 volt application nor is there enough plate surface area so I'm reasonably certain that uh, when when I do create a cell for a final production unit it will have much closer spacing on the on the uh, plates probably in the order of uh, 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch at the very most but then again, I have to see what the conductivity is going to be of potassium hydroxide. However, at this point, I just wanted to show you how much gas production I do get from this solution of 30% vinegar, 70% distilled water, and just a, I mean, literally just a, a needle's head worth of um, dishwashing detergent. And I think where I'm using Joy, just uh, in case you're interested in the brand. I'm going to ramp the voltage up. It's really going to go up to about 150 volts, uh, which will give me 18 volts roughly per cell. But it's only going to draw about 3 amps. But uh, I'm going to crank it up and I'm going to show you how, how quickly we start to get generation. So here we go. There we are. We're at 2.7 amps. And you see immediately the gas production begins. In just a minute, I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to give you a clip of the surface of the electrolyzer uh, container and uh, show you uh, the uh, quality of the gas that we're generating. Pretty impressed with that. Here we are looking down at the top of the cell you can see that uh, I've turned the voltage off again. It uh, it wasn't nearly as sudsy as I had expected that it might be. Uh, I guess that may be partially due to the to the vinegar that's in the solution. But I'm going to turn the turn the voltage on again and show you how quickly the production begins from the top. Here we go. It's about 2.75 amps. and there are no large bubbles that have formed earlier there were some fairly large bubbles uh... quite honestly i'm at a bit of a loss to explain why but what i will show you is my latest trick obviously i have to wait for some of the for some of the bubbles to begin to uh, collect However, earlier this evening, uh, when the solution was still a little bit more sudsy than it is now, a, a small pile had developed roughly to the edge of the uh, electrolyte vessel here. And uh, I got a pretty big surprise. It, look, it looked very foamy when, when I brought the flame to it. Um, as I as I immersed the flame in the pile of foam, the foam literally began to melt away from the flame. 
as if uh, it was just regular, regular sudsy water with the bubbles popping as the flame came into contact with it. And then all of a sudden it caught. And needless to say, my ears are still ringing from that little explosion. Um, pretty impressed and I also found a very rapid way to disperse all of the suds. Really very effective, just clears the top entirely. So I'm going to let this run for a couple of minutes and hopefully uh, it will it will suds up a little bit where I can uh, ignite it and show you a little bit of a pop. All right. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot of a whole lot of bubbles to look at, but I think I've got enough here where uh, I can get it to ignite. There you go. <laughs> it jumped a little bit. Quite a bit of explosive power right there. It's a little surprising to me that the surface tension of the of the solution now, as opposed to the way it behaved earlier, is not as great. So I'm not collecting bubbles the way I was earlier. Uh, the the gas the the hydrogen gas is simply being generated, floating to the surface, popping and and circulating again. Um, that is an interesting and uh, an interesting change. So I guess as the as the electrolyte ages, it tends to lose a little bit of surface tension. Let's try this again. So you can see just a couple of bubbles, fairly large pop. I don't even dare put the um, put the lid on the tank and and accumulate the gas and and feed it out the pipe. Although I have done that, uh, I have taken it and uh, filled or partially filled a a sandwich uh a sandwich plastic bag tied it to the end of a of a ruler stick and ignited it over a over a lighted match um wear earplugs when you do that take my word for it so that's it for that's it for now i'm going to uh empty the tank out it has sufficiently cleaned the plates with the with the vinegar solution I'm going to wipe down the plates uh, strip them with um, sandpaper and steel wool and then re uh, rebalance the cells go through the uh, equalization procedure the the, the um, preconditioning of the plates and I'll be doing that with a solution of distilled water and potassium hydroxide. Fortunately, I don't have the hydro potassium hydroxide yet. have to pick that up tomorrow. So with that, uh, I will uh, begin resuming the experiments tomorrow. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out for now. Have fun with your hydrogen. And uh, be looking for uh, future developments in the, in the cell because I've already begun... In fact, maybe I can bring this over and show you. Right there you see the intake plumbing just before the butterfly valve to the plenum of my 89 Honda Accord. And I have the urethane adhesive drying right now. I can't spin it around because it's still it's still liquid. But the uh, the feed tube for the plenum in front of the butterfly valve is is uh, assembled and I'm just waiting for it to dry overnight in the morning what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a vacuum gauge and I'm going to monitor how much vacuum I can create using that port at a wide open throttle condition I just want to see how much vacuum it will generate so when I have that answer, I will report that to you as well. Uh, you can also find my progress at overunity.com. Zero Fossil Fuel. Have a good evening.